Greetings. So you guys are back for cycle number four, hydrologic cycle. Okay, deep breath. We're nearing the end of this vicious beast that is our biogeochemical cycles, and uh, we're gonna near the end with the cycle that most of you guys are already familiar with because part of your elementary and middle school science program probably dealt with the cycling of water at some point. Uh, I'm not trying to insult your intelligence by doing some uh, water cycle stuff, but there are some nuances applicable to what we do in AP Environmental Science that make it worth covering, all right? Uh, so again, we're gonna start with our major reservoirs of water, which include the atmosphere, snow and ice, big reservoir of uh, water, particularly if you take the ice caps in Greenland and Antarctica, right? Uh, surface fresh water, biomass does contain some water, the ocean, as you know, and then of course we got groundwater. I'm just going to give some names to the processes that move water around. Might be a couple new terms that weren't part of your prior water cycle uh, education. Okay, so first of all, like we did with carbon and nitrogen, we'll just begin with water in the atmosphere, right? Um, and talk about the processes that move it around. So, as you know, atmosphere can contribute water to snow and ice or directly to surface fresh water or directly back to the ocean, all right? Uh, so we call that, of course, precipitation. I'm just gonna write precip. Oh my lord. P-R-E-C-I-P. P-R-E-C-I-P. -E and precip. Okay, so precipitation, of course, is that process by which water vapor condenses in the form of clouds. When those little water droplets or ice pellets get big enough, they fall from the sky, creating that magic that we call rain and snow. In some cases, sleet or hail or freezing rain, all kinds of that type of precipitation. That's the delivery of water from the atmosphere to one of these three reservoirs. If it falls in the solid form, of course, that contributes to snow and ice which will eventually, uh, in some cases, become surface fresh water, uh, unless it ends up in Antarctica or Greenland, in which case some of that just stays ice for really, really long periods of time. Okay, so we got precipitation contributing to our snow and ice, to our surface fresh water that falls directly as rain. Okay, and in some cases that just ends right back up in the ocean. It goes rain over the ocean from time to time. All right, and then the reverse of that process is typically referred to as evaporation. E V A P. E V A P. E V A P. All right. All right. So as I was saying, right, that's kind of a view. You probably already knew the term precipitation. You probably already knew the term evaporation. All right. Uh, so a couple maybe newer terms for you. Right, as we look at it, you guys know that plants take water up through their roots from the soil. All right, so we've got surface fresh water, and we're a kind of that would be uh, rivers, lakes, streams, ponds. Right, we're also talking about uh, water that's kind of at the surface of the soil, directly accessible to our plants. Right, and so the process by which surface fresh water ends up in our biomass. Right? Uh, so plants take it up and the, the kind of the technical term for that is through capillary action. Okay, um, and the physics behind capillary action, I'm not gonna get into that, but it's similar to uh, like when you suck up a straw. Well, maybe that's not the best way to put it. Anyways, capillary action is a process by which plants take water available in the soil and kind of suck it up uh, through the roots um, and deliver the water and any nutrients that might be in the water to the various parts of the plant. Okay, uh, so that's surface fresh water into biomass. Then, of course, uh, animals and other organisms directly drink the water. I'm not going to put this on this diagram because it's uh, not a big movement of water there, but Water moves through the, you know, all living organisms need various amounts of water, all right? Uh, the way the plants bring it in is through capillary action, okay? Um, and one other term you might not be super familiar with is uh, where the process by whereby plants 
transfer water back to the atmosphere. Uh, and the way we call that is called the FAPO transpiration, E-V-A-P-O, T-R-A-N-S, P-I-R-A-T-I-O-N, evapotranspiration. So again, um, plants, uh, trees especially, and our larger plants, right, they take water out of the surface, from the surface, bring it up, transfer that water, and then a lot of that water then evaporates off the leaves and outer structures of the plants themselves. And that process by which evaporation happens from plants is called evapotranspiration. Um, and that is a major mover of water where we have lots of vegetation. So, uh, so much so that plants are actually uh, part of the climate system. All right. So in an area of rainforest, for example, if you deforest a large area in tropical rainforest, you actually end up changing precipitation patterns as a result. It ends up being a little bit drier. Uh, precipitation occurs. Okay, so we have precipitation and evaporation. We've got capillary action, bringing water into biomass uh, to cure our plants. Evapotranspiration takes water from our vegetation, puts it back into the atmosphere. All right. Um, the last the reservoir we want to talk about is groundwater. All right, and um, the way in which water enters our groundwater supplies is through what we call percolation. All right, so as snow and ice melt, for example, some of that water contributes to runoff, right? Um, it becomes surface water. Some of that water percolates through the ground and feeds our underground, what we call aquifer. So uh, there's a lot of water stored underground uh, in some places. Those big underground reservoirs of water, what we call aquifers or groundwater. And surface freshwater can percolate through the soil to feed into an aquifer, as can melting snow and ice. So some of that melting snow and ice percolates into the ground to feed groundwater, same with freshwater. Some of the melting snow and ice becomes runoff, right? And feeds our surface freshwater and around where we are. So when we see that even in the summertime around here, there is absolutely no precipitation uh, for weeks, sometimes in some cases months on end, we still have water coming down our streams from the mountains. And that's because that snow and ice that's up there on those higher peaks is continuing to melt in the absence of precipitation to feed those uh, rivers and streams. Okay, uh, so that is the gist of our water cycle, right? Evaporation and precipitation, probably not new terms to you. Evapotranspiration, capillary action, percolation are probably uh, newer terms for you. All right, um, and that is the, the hydrologic cycle.